Parshas Vayeshev, Tov Shinayin Zayin. Firstly, I'd like to say, I want to thank a few people, or a lot of people, I spent last Shabbos out of town, and it'll be good for the people here to, to hear how many people, so, so many people came over to me and mentioned to me that they watched the shear, they, they followed the shear, and it really, really means a lot to all of us here that um, that's really the reason that we do it, to spread the word of Torah, to spread the words of Nesiva Shalom. And I want to thank all those people who came over to me last week and let me know it was really a very, very humbling experience. And uh, one person stands out of my mind, a yid by the name of Ephraim Schwartz, who's been following this year basically every, every single week from the first week that we started now into our eighth year. And I would like to tell him that, of course, it means a lot to us and we appreciate the chizuk that we get from everybody and all, all the people who actually follow the shir and have grown from the shir. The Gemara tells us, Mesech de Soita da Flamet Vovam Beith, that when the Posuk tells us in this week's parsha, when the Posuk tells us about Yosef, by Yavoy Habaisa la Sois Malachtoi, that he came to the house to do the work, so the Chazal tell us, the Gemara mentions that at that moment, Yosef, Yosef at Tzadik, was on the verge of being Oivar Navera. And what happened? Very famously, we all know that at the last second, Chazal tell us, that at the last moment, right before Yosef at Tzadik was going to do an Avera, he saw the image of his father, Yaakov Avinu, and that saved him. That, right then, stopped Yosef from doing an Avera. And when that mamash happened, just the last moment, he saw Yaakov Avinu, and that's what saved him from an Avera. So the Siva Shalom asks a question here, that really this seems to be very contrary to many other Mamore Chazal that explain and extol the wonderful qualities that Yosef had and the most, the, the most fundamental quality that Yosef had was Yosef is the person that we know was able to be Oymed Messiah. He was able to withstand a very, very tough Messiah. And that is the virtue. That is what Yosef really stands for. That is what Yosef, when something sticks out in your mind, Chazal tell us in other places, that Yosef was the man, he was the person that shows every person that when you're faced with an Esoyen of Taiva, when you're faced with an Esoyen, you could withstand an Esoyen. And we know that Kriyas Yamsuf, by Kriyas Yamsuf, we know that the Yamsuf only split, Chazal tell us, in the schus of Yosef, because it wouldn't split for the schus of Moshe, it wouldn't split for the schus of Aaron, it wouldn't split for the schus of any of the other 600,000 people that left Mitzrayim. The Yam split by Kriyas Yamsuf only in the schus of Yosef. So the question is, asked the Nesiva Shalom, how could it be that we want to say over here that Yosef came so close to falling into an Avera and it was only the last minute, at the last moment when Yosef saw Yaakov Avinu, that's what stopped him from doing an Avera. How could it be that we say Yosef is the example? Yosef is what we should have in front of our eyes when we're faced with an Esoyen. Yosef was so great that the Yamsuf would only split for Yosef, and yet we're saying that Yosef went all the way to the end and just at the last moment he stopped himself from doing an Avera. How could it be that this is the same Yosef that we hold up there and we say Yosef is an example for all of us? Another question that Yisiva Shalom asks from the Sefer Priya Oretz, Chazal tell us that Yosef Mechayev Eser that any person that comes up, Lacha Meyev Eser, and they're going to say to a person, why did you fall? Why did you give in to this taiva? 
And he's going to have, every person is going to have every which excuse they can give. And in Shemayim, they're going to say, there was no one who was faced with a greater Nisoyim than Yosef. And Yosef stopped himself. Yosef withheld himself from the Taiba. So that's what they're going to say to a person in Shemayim. That means Yosef Mechayim Es Rishoyim. The answer is going to be that you know worse off than Yosef. Yosef was able to stop himself. The question we have over here, you're telling me that Yosef had a great Nisoyim and he overcame it, but it was only always, it was at the last second we're saying. The Gemara Masech Tesoyta tells us that it was at the last second. So how could it be that we use Yosef again as a reference point to people that come up to Allah HaMeva Esrim, how could it be that we use Yosef as that reference point? Wouldn't many Rishoyim, Esrim and Sidashon, or any person who did an Avera, wouldn't they also stop themselves if they saw the image of Yaakov Avinu? Why do we say that Yosef is so great? Many, many people, if right before they were going to do an Avera, Chas Rishon, right? You saw the image of Yaakov Avinu, you would also stop yourself from doing an Avera. Again, how was Yosef the Tzadik Yisoyed Olam if we see that up until the last second it was almost possible for Yosef to do an Avera? So the Siva Shalom explains with a very, very interesting Yisoyed. And he says that there are really three different types of ways that the Yitzhahara comes to overcome, to defeat and to demoralize a person. And he says like this, the first way that he, the Yitzhahara comes to a person is if he wants the person to do, to transgress a specific Avera, where the whole goal of the Yitzhahara is specifically to come to a person and make him do that one specific Avera. That's one type of Yitzhahara. Yitzhahara wants you to sleep uh, to oversleep and uh, not say Krishna that morning, he'll come to you and he'll say, he'll somehow get you not to say, it's just for that one mission that the Yetzirah has. That's one Yetzirah that comes to a person. The next Yetzirah is where the Yetzirah wants to come to a person to have a total negative effect on that person. To, to give a person, whether to take away their confidence or in some other way, but to have more of a general effect on a person, that a person becomes not interested in doing mitzvahs, and maybe he'll even be over a lot of Averis, where he takes away that person's confidence and feeling for Yiddishkeit, feeling of closeness to Hashem. That is the second way Yitzhahara comes to a person. He just implants bad thoughts or bad mitzvahs in a person which has a general effect on the person. But there's also a third type of Yitzhahara, and you know what that Yitzhahara is? That Yitzhahara is where the Yitzhahara wants to come to you where it's not just going to affect you. He wants to make you do something that's going to have ramifications for those around you too. It's going to have ramifications for many, many other people in Klai Yisrael. When the Yitzhahara might come to a leader, to a teacher, to a Rebbe, when it comes to a person like that, and tries to bring that, either that person, him or her, down, when the HR has an effect on that, he's looking for it to have a ripple effect on many, many other people that this person teaches, that this person has influence on in Kla Yisrael. It's an extremely, extremely strong Yitzhahara that operates from Maile Midera Chateva. And so the Nisoyan of Yosef says in the Siva Shalom, it had really two separate parts. There was one part of the Nisoyim that was just Negea to Yosef privately. Negea to Yosef himself. And it was one that only would affect Yosef. That was one part of the Nisoyim. And on that part of the Nisoyim, the, the part that was Negea just to Yosef, Yosef was able to fight that Yitzhahara. He's able to defeat that one on his own. Yosef did not need need to see the image of his father for that. Yosef had a taiva. He, he withheld himself. He held back right before he was able to do that battle. Yeah, but he was able to do that battle on his own. He did not need to see the image of his father, Yaakov Avinu, to fight that. But then there was the second part of the Messiah. The second part that of the, eight, the second Yetzirah that came to Yosef was the strongest Yetzirah that we mentioned 
that wanted to bring down the future of Kalal Yisrael with Yosef. The future of Kalal Yisrael that was going to be in Mitzrayim and needed Yosef to set an example at that moment how a person acts when they are faced with adversity. How a person acts when you're faced with the Yitzhara. That was the strong, that was the second Yitzhara that came to Yosef. Yosef needed to set an example at that moment and the Yitzhara wanted to get Yosef not to do that. Yosef needed to begin the fight that would last all the years that Kalal Yisrael was in Mitzrayim. And the Yitzhara fiercely wanted to bring Yosef down in that regard. He wanted to bring down all the future generations that were going to come after Yosef. For that chelek of the Nisayan, that is where Yosef needed to see the image of Yaakov Avinu. Because that Yitzhara comes with a Lamaila Midera Chateva fight. When the Yitzhara comes to a teacher, when the Yitzhara comes to a person that can influence other people, it has to be so powerful. And if the Yitzhara wins that battle, it's a ripple effect. He knows he's going to affect that neighborhood, that class, that group of people, that cheer, that group of people that hang out with this person. The Yitzhara knows you win that one. Oh, that's a major victory. And for that Yitzhara, for that Nisoyen, Yosef HaTzadik, even Yosef HaTzadik, needed that special siyata d'shmaya of seeing his father, of seeing Yaakov Avinu. So of course, says in Siva Shalom, Yosef is still the example for all of us to teach us how we fight the Yitzhara individually. When we say Yosef Mechayev is a Rishayim, it's because on an individual basis, they're going to ask you in Shemayim that uh, Yitzhara came to you and tried to make you be over an Avera. Why didn't you withstand it? Nobody had an Isoyim as great as Yosef. And those were the two parts. And that is how we reconcile, that is how we explain the Gemara Masech Tosaita that tells us that Yosef was so great and that the Yamsuf only split in the schus of Yosef at Tzadik. We're coming this week now. In another couple of days, we're going to be at Hanukkah. Motzai Shabbos is the first night of Hanukkah. And Hanukkah represents to us Lamailami Derech HaTeva. Hanukkah represents to us the Koyach that we're able to fight the Yitzhara. The light of Hanukkah gives us that extra light. Every year it walks around with light the entire year. But when it comes to Hanukkah, the Hanukkah lights teach us that we are not just what we think we are. That we're able to go one step further every night. To grow from one to two, all the way up to eight. There's so many different levels that if we just try and we just push ourselves, we're able to fight the Yitzhara. We're able to grow, we're able to do more, we're able to shine light to all those around us. It's not just, we're not just individuals. Every person has to realize that no matter what you think, you're very powerful and you're very light and you have an influence on so, so many people that you come in contact with in your family, in your business, in your neighborhood. You have so, so much capability. And Hanukkah teaches us that we can harness all this light and we can fight even that Yitzhara that comes to us. Let's learn the lesson of this Parsha. Combine it. On Motzah Shabbos, combine it with the lessons that we need to learn for Hanukkah. Next week we'll give a more extensive um, shear on Hanukkah. But let's, before Hanukkah, let's not miss Hanukkah. By the time we get to next week, we're also a week into Hanukkah. Let's use every single night to grow and to spread the word, the words of Torah, the light of Torah, and the light of Hanukkah to everybody around us.